So okay. welcome to those of you who have joined us. Um, if you're not familiar with me, although I looked at the names and I recognize uh, at least a couple of them, so I think that you are, but I'm Trisha T, the founder and CEO of the Treff School. And our uh, guest today is Adelia Cologne, who is from Credit Union One, and um, she's going to be talking about cannabis banking um, in Illinois and the services that they're actually providing in Illinois throughout the state. Um, before I turn it over to Adelia, I wanted to do just some quick housekeeping things so that you guys are aware of what all we've got going on. Um, exactly one week from today, which is November 17th, we're, we'll be having a session at noon um, about the lawsuits that are impacting the licenses. So I know those of you who have applied already and are awaiting scoring on your application or awaiting notification about um, deficiency notices and the opportunity to resubmit information uh, for that. Um, there's, there are lawsuits going on that are impacting uh, all of the licenses right now. So there's just to kind of catch you up on where things are. And obviously some of these things may change in the next few days because that's the nature of, of litigation. Um, there were lawsuits filed after the dispensary round because there were only, you know, there was a smaller number of qualified people than there were licenses, significantly smaller, right? So there are people who sued for that. The, some of the people, and so they sued to stop the lottery. There are people who are suing, who actually were on the list to try to get the lottery to move forward. And there's actually, I believe this week, there's a court date, I think either Thursday or Friday of this week on that case. There's also a pending litigation as it relates to the licenses coming out of the Department of Ag. So the first litigation I referred to was dispensaries. There's another litigation um, for licenses coming out of the Department of Ag. So Craft Row and Fusion Transporters. Um, I believe Craft Row Association. I'm not sure which one. I know that there's more than one. Um, so I don't know. I don't want to uh, monkey up the name and say the wrong name. But there's a group that has sued to try to push the Department of Agriculture to get those licenses issued as soon as possible there will be a decision concerning that, I believe either next week or the week after. Um, but I know it's this month, I can't remember the exact date. The One of the attorneys who filed that uh, suit is actually the attorney who is going to be presenting on next Tuesday at noon. So he will be providing an update on both the dispensary lawsuit and the craft row lawsuit that he filed. Um, so you want to register for that. I'll, after this session, I'll be sending out uh, a link to this recording and a link to, um, you know, our upcoming session. So you'll be able to get those if you haven't gotten those already. And, if, and I've sent emails about those already. So you can look for email for me and you'll be able to have that information. The other session that we have scheduled also for next week is next Thursday, which is November 19th. And that is at 12.30 p.m. And that is a session on um, best practices in cannabis taxes, accounting, and legal. Um, so that's a session for you to be thinking about some of the things that you need to do in advance as you get ready to set up your businesses, you know, once you get your licenses, um, you know, in terms of setting up your accounting and dealing with 280E and all of the different things that are specific to cannabis businesses that may be different from other uh, businesses, especially as it relates to taxes and accounting. And there's a legal ramification and some of the things that you should be doing now as well. So that's coming up next Thursday. Um, so you'll have those links. I do have another one that I'm working on. It will be in December. I don't have an exact date yet, but it will be dealing with hiring for a cannabis business. And so we did HR sessions previously. If you didn't attend those, we actually have those recordings available for you on our Dropbox. So you can go back and watch them. And that talks, deals with a bunch of different things related to HR. But that specific one is going to be dealing with specific issues that relate to hiring for a cannabis business. So 
um, and, and this is with an agency that does consulting in the cannabis hiring space. So in Illinois, so you want to um, attend that one when I announce it. I do not have a date yet. Please don't email me and ask me. Well, it's not on the website. It's not there yet because we don't have a date yet. We're still working through the details. So this is just me giving you a heads up on, you know, some of the things that we have coming and how we're serving you guys. So uh, I think that's all of the housekeeping I have. So with that being said, I am going to turn things over to Adelia and I am going to also shut off my camera and my microphone. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone, and um, great sessions that you guys have coming up. Um, if you haven't already taken advantage of those, I highly suggest that you do. Um, a lot of those topics that, that will be covered um, are valuable um, information, so definitely take advantage um, while the TREP school is able to offer that. I think that's fantastic. Um, so let's get into cannabis banking. Um, again, my name is Adelia Colon. I am here with Credit Union One. Um, our MRB program, or Marijuana Related Business Program, um, is a cannabis-friendly banking solution for the industry. Um, I myself have been with Credit Union One for over 15 years now, so I've worn uh, quite a few hats within the company. And um, right now, the cap that I wear is the Relationship Manager for all of our MRB accounts within the state of Illinois. Um, and why is uh, banking important? Um, well, in an in industry that lacks banking, um, we definitely have come up with what we feel is a great solution for that problem. Um, as we know, for the majority of this industry, it has been a very cash-driven industry. And there's so many risks that come with dealing with solely cash that we are definitely trying to minimize that risk that you'll be taking and the industry as a whole. So let's get right into it. All right. Uh, so as I mentioned, Credit Union One, um, we are a not-for-profit state charter finance institution. We are owned by our members and we've actually been a full service finance institution for over 60 years now, uh, currently offering our members everything from savings, checking, mortgages, auto loans, credit cards, you name it, we probably have a product for you. Um, what makes this so different, again, is because we are a not-for-profit institution. So how does that benefit you as a member? Uh, because we don't have shareholders, um, that's what allows us to give back to our members, give back to our communities with being able to offer such programs as a MRB program um, and lower rates, you know, when it comes to homes and autos and higher rates when it comes to your savings accounts. Um, the reason, the biggest reason why we're even able to be a cannabis friendly uh, financial institution is because we are state chartered and we're not, um, we're not federally backed. So we're, we're not, um, um, we don't have to go through so much red tape because we're not federally funded. So that's why we get to offer this type of program. Um, as I mentioned, we are a full service institution. We currently have over 5,000 um, branches nationwide um, through what we call our share branching network. Um, so yeah, so our cannabis friendly banking allows you to focus on your business growth while we take care of the financial service pieces. We're definitely trying to be that one-stop shop finance institution um, for, for your business so that you can continue grow, you know, focusing on growing your business while we take care of the uh, financial service pieces of it. So let's get into what we actually have to offer you. Again, we want to offer you complete banking, um, that one-stop shop feel. So again, you know, taking just a lot of those worries off of your plate so that you can continue focusing on growing your business um, and we'll handle the rest, right? So for your business, we have everything from your MRB savings. We have checking options. We have money market options. We also have escrow accounts that 
for you dispensary folks out there. Um, the state, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the state is actually um, requiring all dispensaries to have uh, an ECHO account, or perhaps a lot of people call it a surety bond. Um, basically, it's a separate account that you must maintain a minimum balance um, within that account that will solely focus on paying taxes or any penalties or fees um, that the state might be charging your business. Um, so they want to have that separate from your operating um, account. So again, that is something that we, we offer as well. Uh, ACHs and domestic wires um, come with the account. So again, just another way to minimize that um, cash flow, um, being able to offer more of electronic payments, whether you're sending out to a vendor or perhaps a vendor sending a payment to you. We also have our armored car cash pickup service in place, um, which is again, just another way of minimizing that risk that you will have to take uh, from having to travel from point A to point B with large amounts of cash. Um, this service is actually, um, what they would do is they will go to your facility, pick up any cash that you have at hand, and it gets taken directly to the Federal Reserve and gets put right into your account. Um, so we are partnered with Imperial Solutions. Um, they are a cannabis-friendly pickup service. They have been in the industry for um, about six years now. They are based out in Colorado, and they have just been tremendous for um, all of our, our members so far. We also have employee payroll services in place. We are partnered with Paragon Payroll. They are a cannabis friendly uh, payroll company um, who have also been in the space since about 2012 now. Um, so they'll be able to offer you the ability to offer your employees direct deposit and any HR related um, issues or solutions that come with payroll services. So again, just really having everything in, in house under one roof, under one umbrella. Um, again, just really trying to make that one stop ex shop experience for you guys. Um, ATM and ATM services is something that we also offer all of our dispensary individuals, um, just really being able to offer that other um, solution as far as payment goes. Um, as we all know, uh, ATMs do um, generate revenue for your business. Um, so that's something that we would offer you as well. Best thing about our program guys is that our ATMs are at no cost to you. Um, we actually provide you with a free ATM. It gets serviced for free. So, you know, our service as far as depositing the funds into the ATM, no charge to you. And you still get to generate that revenue um, at a monthly basis, quarterly basis, or even annual basis. So um, also a fantastic offering that we offer you guys. Um, something new that actually has come across um, Credit Union One that I'm so excited to share with you guys. Um, that was actually after this presentation was sent over. So we have two new offerings. Um, again, just really sticking to um, that whole cash minimizing mentality. Um, we actually have partnered with CanPay uh, for you dispensary individuals. Again, um, if no one has heard of them, it is a cashless ATM solution for dispensaries. Uh, basically what they do is they connect directly with the dispensary and they actually authorize ACH debits from clients, patients, um, and then ACH credits to the dispensaries. So again, just really trying to minimize that cash flow within this industry that's so heavily cash driven. Um, in addition to that, uh, we actually also have a bill pay solution um, in place. So in addition to um, online banking that also comes with your account, um, mobile remote deposit capture, uh, we also actually also have a bill pay solution. Uh, Magic Writer is who we've actually partnered with to be able to handle that for us as well. Uh, we actually provide you with a web browser address that allows your business to originate a debit or credit payment to your vendors, et cetera. So again, just really trying to move everything in, in the more electronic world of things. 
Um, so those are definitely fantastic offerings that we have in place already and um, are really excited to continue growing with this industry that, as we all know, just rapidly evolves on a daily basis. Um, on the flip side of that, for your employees, um, because we treat your employees just like we would treat any other credit union member, you know, we definitely don't want to penalize them for working in the industry, as we have heard, um, as we have built our program, we've actually heard that a lot of employees, just because they work for the industry, they get penalized, or they themselves are um, having a hard time finding bank accounts, or even loans that are willing to give them good interest rates uh, because they consider them high risk accounts, not with Credit Union One. They'll be able to have multiple saving options, checking accounts with debit card, again, um, you know, offering that direct deposit. They'll be able to finance a new or used vehicle, mortgages, lines of credit, um, you know, personal loans, uh, again, at, at a very reasonable low interest rates. We're not gonna penalize them just because they work in the industry. As I had mentioned some of these, as far as the ultimate convenience, in addition to your offerings, your account will also come with free online banking, mobile banking. You will actually be um, directed with a direct contact representative. So once your account is established with us, we're not gonna throw you into a queue or have to worry about having to call an 800 number. You will actually have a direct contact representative um, that will be able to answer any concerns, any questions, you know, 24 seven, um, just really maximizing on that experience um, within your account. Uh, they also monitor your account just to make sure that, you know, there's nothing suspicious going on. There's nothing as far as um, anyone having access to your account that shouldn't have access to your account. So really, we have really upped the security when it comes I don't know if it's just me, but Adelia can't hear you anymore. Somebody type in a chat if you can still hear her and if it's just me. Okay. Yeah, Adelia, we cannot hear you. Um, we don't know what happened, but your audio went out. And it looks like your mic is still on, so I'm not exactly sure. Okay, your mic is off now, so. see. Okay. So yeah, it's not just me. So um, Adelia, if you want to, let's see, I'm sure, I don't know how else to possibly resolve this. Maybe you come off and get back on. I'm hoping you can actually hear me. Um,
So Adelia, um, let me find the, if the computer audio isn't working, we might be able to do a, for you to do the audio by phone. Um, let me find that information and I can send it to you in the chat. Okay, let me send this. Oh, you're welcome, Kevin. Okay, Adelia, here is the number. I just sent you by chat the number for you to dial in by phone um, if it was your computer audio that went out. <laughs> if it was your phone audio that went out, then maybe go switch the computer. <laughs> so. So while we are waiting, and I don't want to stop the video because then it's going to be like very abrupt <laughs> that we stop the video and then I restart the video. So people can watch this later. Uh, it's just going to be like, you know, I guess have to fast forward or whatever point until the slides change. Um, so for those of you who are on, who have joined uh, while we try to get Adelia's audio back. So Adelia, I'm just going to keep talking until I hear back from you. Um, Oh, and let me send you my, I'm gonna send you my cell phone number if you wanna text me. And that way we can communicate because it's hard for me to try to communicate with you when we don't have audio. Um, so for those of you who are um, here uh, and you might've joined late, I'm going to just chat with you a little bit until we get Adelia's audio back. Because I think we had a few people who, um, who joined. And Adelia, if you, if you join by phone as a, as a participant and not a panelist, you let me know and I will, I will uh, allow you to talk. But I guess you'll probably have to text me or send me a chat. Um, okay, so next week we have sessions on um, the, the lawsuits that are pending. That's next Tuesday at noon. Let me make sure I'm telling you the right time because I get times mixed up in my head. Yes, that's at noon next Tuesday. And then And then we also have um, another session on Thursday concerning Hold on, Adelia's texting me, you guys. I'm sorry, you guys, I can't talk and type.
Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I am so sorry. Oh, you know, technology is great when it works, but not so much fun when it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're having so, problems today Nat, with both now the, the, the camera and the audio. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And I'm so sorry, guys. Okay. I truly apologize for that. Um, can you guys still see my screen, though? Yes, we can still see your screen. Okay, perfect, perfect. And again, I do apologize. I, I don't know what's happening. Now. I wish I was an IT expert, but that is <laughs> way out of my field. <laughs> Definitely out of my field. Um, okay, so, um, well, I guess I can just pick up. I'm not sure where I left off. Um, I, I know we were talking about the free online banking and mobile banking as additional just convenient services that come with the account. Um, your direct contact representative, um, everyone is assigned a direct contact representative once the account is open, um, which is giving you that ability to have a go-to person instead of having to call an 800 number or dealing with someone new every time you have a question or concern regarding your account once it's open, you know. Um, so again, just having that person to go to, um, which in addition to what we'll be doing is that 24 hour account monitoring, um, just making sure that your, your funds are safe, right? Making sure that if you're writing the check, that it's you writing it, if you're authorizing the ACH, that you have authorized it. Um, so we definitely have upped our security when it comes to our MRB platform. Um, in addition, you know, you know, the account does come with free e-statements. Um, they are electronic statements. Um, so, but you'll also have that online access. So you can always go online, see the transaction history, see what's going in, what's going out. Um, a lot of accountants, of course, love that, you know, because you'll be able to give them um, account uh, history at the drop of a hat. You don't have to wait for anyone if they're looking for a particular transaction that they might be um, looking for. So definitely also, you know, that just having that convenience um, uh, as far as accessibility and the services that come with the account. In addition, um, again, as I mentioned, as far as upping our security, um, when it came to our MRB um, uh, program, we wanted to make sure to have proper and compliant banking services for the program itself. Um, just allowing us to be compliant with the state, keep it safe for the community, keep it safe for everyone involved. Um, uh, the actual the state of Illinois has approved our program. They love our program. Um, just to mention, we get a lot of referrals from the state of Illinois themselves um, because, you know, again, they have vetted us uh, thoroughly. We have um, partnered with the state uh, the Illinois State Treasurer's Office, the, the CEO. Um, we're also uh, partner with them as well. So again, just really having that compliance um, component in place. Um, again, as far as security, we when we moved into this space, we wanted to add that extra security measure to not only and not only for our MRB accounts, but for all of our members, just making sure to protect um, everyone involved. So as far as anything that you share with us, whether it's your business plan or you know your application. You you submitted to the state, uh, which are some of the requirements, um, and I, I'm actually going to go through that next, um, that we will be collecting from you guys um, in order to establish the account. Just know that all of that is protected um, because we are backed by so many federal laws. Um, we cannot at any time disclose any type of information when it comes to anyone, um, with, you know, any, of, any of our members. Um, so this is just a list of the majority of the items that we will be collecting um, if you decided to establish an account with us. Um, so just copies of your ID, whether it's passport, state of your driver's license, as long as it's valid. Uh, we do collect tax returns on all beneficial owners. And beneficial owners, we define those individuals as anyone who has 10% or more interest in the business. Um, anyone outside of that, uh, threshold will not need to be considered um, as a beneficial owner. Um, so we will not collect any information on those. So if you have, um, you know, anyone out there who is just um, in, any investors 
um, that you might be giving them less than that 10%, they will not have to be involved as far as account opening process. It's just those individuals who have that 10% or more. Uh, so that's who we consider a beneficial owner. Um, so we'll collect tax returns, personal financial statements, um, of course, your article with the the corporation, um, your management agreement, a uh, copy of the EIN, uh, your, your proof of the, that your business is a good standing, which is literally just going onto the state website and getting those certificate of good standing, um, your business plan that will include, um, you know, products and services sold, approved under list, purchasing guidelines, staff and rules, security protocol. A lot of the things that if you've already applied for a license, this list might be very similar to that. Um, so a lot of the things you probably already collected or have or have turned into the state. So you probably already have a lot of these things at hand. Um, your list of payers, payees, if you've already started to, you know, build up that vendor list, uh, we also collect that as well. And we do ask for a copy of the application that has been submitted to the state. Um, so this is pretty much um, in full detail all the items that we collect. Um, if there's anything outside of that, as you're going through the process, of course, we will um, inform you just so that you can have that those documents ready. And that is pretty much it, guys. Um, thank you guys again so much for taking time today to meet with me. Um, thank you for your patience as we run through that technical difficulty. Um, again, this is my direct contact information. That is my phone number, my email. Um, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. If you guys have any questions, um, I know we're going to go through a few questions now, but anything outside of today that perhaps you didn't think of, um, I am always more than happy to assist. Um, in addition, you know, I being in this program now for a little over a year now, I have come into contact with so many individuals um, that I am always happy to share, um, you know, any accountants, lawyers, lobbyists, you know, anyone um, who you might think of to help build your business. Um, I might have someone that you can, that I can refer you to, even construction companies, you know, <laughs> waste management companies, security companies, anyone that you're trying to really get in contact. And um, the good thing is that we already know that they're cannabis friendly. So kind of minimizing that um, homework for you. So please, please use, use me as a resource. I really look forward to speaking with you guys, hopefully um, somewhere down the line of your ventures. Um, but again, thank you so much for having me today. And Trisha, I'll go ahead and open the Q&A. Okay. So the first question we have is from Reggie and it's, is there a minimum amount to open an account or to keep an account with Credit Union One? Yes, um, and great question. There is minimums, there are fees involved, um, of course, um, just like any other uh, banking account. Um, but in order for me to go into those full details, there is uh, an NDA that we have to uh, fill out. But I'll give you guys ranges just so you guys can know. Um, the minimum starting off is about 10,000 to start off an MRB account. Um, we also do have ancillary accounts. Um, those have different minimum balances. So if you're not you know, growing or selling, infusing, um, transporting the product, then you fall under an ancillary tier. Um, and those are, those are different, but the it, it's 10,000 is what you can, can expect. Okay, and then the next question is from Kevin. What are your monthly account fees and what fees do you charge for your services such as the armored car, wire transfer and ACH transfer? Uh, those fees, I definitely won't be able to get into full details um, until we have that NDA in place. But what I can tell you is that before we started this program, we actually hired outside consultants to help build our program. And our fees compared to many others out there are nowhere near what they're charging, um, which is why we've, we've had the pleasure to already onboard so many accounts already um, because our fees are, are very, very low compared to what's out there. Okay. Right now, there are no other questions, but I know this 
I know this group and they have a pattern, which is somebody's typing a question <laughs> right now. So, um, <laughs> okay, so I don't mind, I, I don't yeah, mind I sticking that, around for a couple more minutes. Yeah, so I know that that's typically what happens, like we'll be done and the po a question will pop up. So uh, while <laughs> I'm waiting for any additional questions, um, mm -hmm. I was, while we were, working on the sound issues, I was talking about our upcoming session. So Tuesday, next week, 12 o'clock is the legal issue. Um, we'll be talking about the lawsuits that are pending in this space, both for cannabis, cannabis, both, uh, everything's cannabis, both for dispensaries and for uh, craft bro infusion transportation. Um, the lawyer who filed the suit on behalf of the craft girls, I knew there would be another question, um, is going to be on with us. And then next Thursday, we will have a session on um, best practices in, in accounting. Uh, uh, I'm getting, my brain is getting tired. I can feel myself shutting, my brain shutting down. Uh, best practices in accounting and, um, legal and um what is the other word that i'm looking for hold on and taxes duh so um so now we have more questions next question how do you help clients comply with money laundering issues with the feds very good question kevin yes very good um yeah well that's part of um our monitoring that we have to do with 24-hour monitoring that is something that um, our your representative will be doing within your account. So, um, of course, one of the, one of their jobs is vetting the vendors. Um, we actually do do a very thorough uh, vetting process just to make sure that um, these vendors actually do exist and they're not just you know made up vendors to allow for money laundering. Um, because yes, money laundering is a big issue that uh, the industry has been faced with. Um, so that's, there's, we have a lot of uh, components in place to, to minimize that and prevent it. Okay, the next question is, do you offer business loans for cannabis businesses? Oh, great question. Actually, yes. Uh, we haven't finalized the program for our commercial lending side of the MRB world um, as of yet, but we have um, the policies and procedures already in place. We're definitely pushing to having it finalized um, before the end of the year, um, if not beginning of, of next year, so that we can also start offering uh, commercial lending for, for, for MRBs, um, whether it's real estate, lines of credit, uh, things of that nature to either help you continue growing the business or purchasing, you know, buildings or, or land um, so that you can keep, you know, keep growing the business and opening more dispensaries. Okay. Next question is, are your employees undertaking special compliance training? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, we have a specific BSA group um, who they have to be and get certified um, in order for them to be compliant, um, in order for them to stay on top of all the, the regulations and changes uh, within the industry. Um, so, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And you guys are asking excellent questions. So, <laughs> Adelia, to give you a, a clue as to why <laughs> these, like, these are really specific. We had a session last week that was all about cannabis banking done by Safe Harbor Bank, which they're not licensed in Illinois. So it was all educational. So I feel like a lot of these questions are coming out of the fact that you had a very good and educational webinar and that people paid very close attention because they wanna make sure that they're not gonna have any issues with their bank um, when they do open you know, their uh, MRB account. Oh, great. Yeah. And I am, again, I'm more than happy to, to answer any questions. Um, w you know, before we got into the space, we, our program is something that we wanted to have um, a long-term solution for the industry. So please know that, yeah, we have definitely done our homework. We're definitely in this for the long haul. Um, we definitely 
again, because we're vetted by the state, we need to be very compliant with the state in order to continue doing business for MRBs. So, yeah, compliance um, is, is, a, is a major factor for us. But, no, yeah, that's, that's great. Yep. Who doesn't want to protect their business, right? That's right. That's right. So, yeah, so all of these people are very well educated. And Kevin just uh, put in the Q&A that I was right that the, um, the program last week is what's leading to some of these very pointed questions, but very educated questions. I love people who are very educated about their business and making sure they cross all their T's and dot all their I's. So I, I'm very proud. Sure. Right now. I feel like a proud <laughs> right now. <laughs> so um, let's see. I don't see any other questions questions. So um, if anybody wants to get in touch with Adelia, please make sure you note her information. But just in case you don't, it's quite all right, because this presentation is going to be made available to you. Um, uh, Adelia, will, will you be sharing the slides with us or no? If you can, that's fine. But I just wanted to, to know to set expectations. Yeah, I can. I can. Okay. Yeah, I can send it to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll have the slides available on our Dropbox, um, and then I'll also put the recording out there, and this recording will be available on our Dropbox. So if you have business partners that you want to know about credit union one and they were unable to attend, you will be able to share the, um, download the information from my Dropbox and share the information with them. And again, I wanna thank everyone for coming out and thank you, Adelia. Um, I can say when it comes to connection, the part where she was talking about being able to connect with other people in the industry who are cannabis friendly. Um, the reason why Adelia and I actually met is because of someone else who's in an ancillary business. So um, it's not because I sought her out or because she sought me out, but someone said, well, have you had a conversation with Credit Union One? Let me connect you. And, and it's a business that is uh, supporting and serving cannabis businesses, but not actually touching product. So, um, and, and one of the things that I do like about Credit Union One, because just like you guys, even though I'm not uh, technically in the industry, I still do my research. Two things I love about Credit Union One is one, you are headquartered in Illinois. And mm -hmm. actually you're headquartered not too far from where I'm at, I'm at right now. Um, and two, <laughs> um, that you actually, it's, it's not a fly by night bank that's only just doing cannabis. There's other, like there's a credit union one branch in Danville, which is where I'm at now. Um, and it's been there mm -hmm. for, it's, it's fairly new, but it's been there for a few years. So it predates cannabis being in this city. Um, um, so it's not just, you know, cannabis banking, it is banking in general, but it's banking in general that is cannabis friendly. So, yeah. So I wanted to put that out. Yeah. And the other thing that I actually just saw today, um, obviously, um, and you guys, anybody who's familiar with credit unions versus banks know that, you know, credit unions sometimes play in a smaller pool than banks. But I just saw today that uh, Credit Union One um, has an agreement to possibly rename UIC Pavilion to Credit Union One Pavilion. Yes, actually, it's already it already is the oh, it already Credit is. Union okay. One. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So maybe that yeah, was just and, a dated article I was looking at, but I did see that. Yeah, and I'm definitely happy to announce that we have actually hit, a, we are a billion dollar in financial institution, which is a, a big milestone for us as well. Definitely happy about that. Um, and we're just, we're, we're gonna continue growing. And MRB is just one more step that we're taking in the right, in the, in the right direction, um, mm -hmm. as I feel. Again, I've, I've been with Credit Union One for so long, I've, I've seen, you know, where we come from and our vision of where we want to be. And we're definitely not, not stopping anytime soon, guys. Oh, I should ask a question that I actually asked. Nobody asked this, but I asked this when I spoke with Adelia, which was when we were planning to schedule this. 
which is, um, are you doing business throughout the state? And the reason why, I, for those of you guys on the, on the line, the reason why I asked you guys that is because as we at the TREP school uh, went out during the license licensing application period, um, we actually went all over the state. We didn't just focus on the on Chicago area because I am from downstate. So I know that most people don't folk do anything south of I-80. So I wanted to make sure that if I put you guys on the line with somebody that you'd actually be able to establish a relationship with them, whether you were in, in Chicago or in Rockford or in Peoria or in East St. Louis. So, um, so Adelia, I'll let you go ahead and answer that question even though I, know, I already know the answer. <laughs> yes, we are all across the state of Illinois. We can um, have a relationship, whether you're in Springfield or, you know, here in Chicago, um, anywhere, anywhere in, in the state of Illinois, you'll be able to, to bank with us. So I wanted to make sure that that was out there for everyone. Okay, well, I think I killed enough time. There are no other questions. So thank you all for joining. Thank you, Adelia, for uh, doing this. And uh, thanks for guys, having me. Yeah, and you guys look for the email from me that um, lets you know that this presentation and the slides are out there and, and the links to our um, upcoming sessions. All right, thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening. All right, good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>